Moving on from there, this is your main on off switch. If you ever work on this machine, you wanna turn this off. It will be off when it comes to you. Turn that on when you um, want to uh, run the machine. Back here is your motor starter box. You're going to bring three phase power right to the bottom here. Um, you'll, you'll, your electrician will have to uh, make a hole wherever you want. I don't know where you're gonna want that, but possibly right here. And then come up right up and put your three phase power right into those little um, slots right there. If your motors ever trip, these are like circuit breakers for your uh, motors. You have your film motor and your agitation motor, they can be reset. So if your auger's not turning or your agitation's not turning, you would wanna come back to check, check these to make sure they haven't been tripped out. There's a transformer here that you're not gonna ever touch. You have some other wiring back here that you're not gonna ever touch. Um, up here is your fill motor. I'm sorry for the lighting. The fill motor's up here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and just uh, tell you, um, I'm gonna switch machines real quick and I'm gonna actually just walk back. Oh, I just walk back because we have a side cover off here. Same, same machine. So you have your agitation uh, mo motor here and reducer. Uh, you're gonna check the oil in that reducer maybe once a year. Um, this is your main clutch brake system. Again, nothing to touch, change, or anything, um, but this is what drives your auger. And over there's your encoder, uh, the black piece. If that, if that ever, uh, if you're turning like a, a thousand rotations and it's not stopping, it could be that went bad. But that's your encoder that talks with your clutch, which talks with your PLC. And that goes down right through your slow speed spindle. Your blade will be attached to that with your uh, auger shaft. I'm gonna go walk back now and show you a couple more things here that are very important. So right now you have your auger shaft here that has a slot in it. That moves up or down. The auger's not in here just for our running purposes, but the auger, the auger will, will need to be at the bottom. There's a lip under here. There's a lip, you can feel the lip. The auger needs to be almost touching the lip. So if it's not, if you say you take this out to clean it and you put it back, um, it's pretty much almost all the way down, but that needs to be almost touching the lip of this funnel. That's how you run, that's how you run non-free flow. Your free flow setup, we're gonna send you a picture of that and that's very important how you set that up as well. You wanna make sure um, the, the auger is set correctly with the spinner plate. And if it's not, again, you're going to adjust this auger shed up or down to make sure the product is sitting correctly on the, on the spinner plate. We're going to send you a manual that'll have a picture of that for you. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. You have your e-stop over here. So if any, any bottles are, um, you know, giving you a hard time, something has a spill, smack that, everything turns off. Um, and your air, we're gonna to need to bring air to this machine. Everything is ready for you to bring air. We have our own air line here and you're, you need to just bring your air straight to this uh, piece right here, the solenoid. Uh, you will bring, I think two to, it's two to four CFM at 50 to 60 PSI. <coughs> Excuse me for my coughing. Um, there's some more wiring in here that you will not need to worry about. That's where your kind of your photo eye is going. Your photo eye is not on right now, but it will be on the conveyor. Um, when we ship it, we were just doing some testing and making sure everything was right. Um, this is your conveyor, uh, reducer and, and, and motor. It's an inline. There's nothing to do there. There's nothing to touch. Um, your chain, you, this is a, this is a, a uni style chain. You want to make sure that you really do a good job with cleaning this, these, this machine and keeping it clean. So air hose, whatever. Um, but you know, you can get some caking on, on these, these are, this is a sprocket driving a chain, um, underneath here. Make sure these stay clean on either side. Um, and your machine will last a long, long time. If these start getting caked up and you're not cleaning it, take care of it. These chain, these chains can break. Uh, that's just what happens with machinery. So you have to make sure you're keeping everything clean. Um, we recommend, you know, t taking this hopper down and cleaning it as often as you can. Um, and how you would do that is we, you, you have quick release clamps. The hopper's not on right now, as you can see in here, but you release a quick release here. There's four of them. You wanna un <coughs> excuse me, undo, undo this bolt, take this out as far as you can go. And there's these pins that are in here. And the, this, this whole, this L bracket and coupling, which hold the hopper, everything pulls down at one time. 
So this, this stays where it is. Do not move this, don't touch it. Um, try never to take this L bracket away from this coupling. Who's ever working on the machine, tell them these bolts do not ever have to be removed. Once they're removed, you have to line it back up. Right now it's lined up, it's perfect. Um, when you remove this bolt, it doesn't matter because we have these pins that are that line up the L bracket and coupling to this hopper support. L bracket and coupling always stay together. The hopper can come off, of course. You just loosen these bolts, lo loosen these bolts for the for the tooling. Th these can all be loose, but these bolts you want to always re have remain on there. And I think that is pretty much it. Um, if you have any other questions, again, refer to the manual or give us a call at 610-466-1440. And there's our number right there. Thank you very much.